Well, I hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving. Wow, can you believe that 2017 is almost over? So a few people had asked for me to share how to overclock the BIOS to 5.2 gigahertz on the 8700K with my new desktop. So I thought we'd take a look at that today. I made this little video so you can see also the memory running at 3500 megahertz. So it's overclocked from, from the 3200 on the XMP. We've got all six cores running at 5.2 gigahertz as you can see there in CPU-Z. And we can verify it in hardware info 64 as well. So without further ado, let's jump into the BIOS and take a look at the settings. So the first thing you see when you go into the BIOS is this advanced mode screen. For the far left, you have some favorites where you can add areas to your favorites that are different sections in the BIOS, like Tweaker's Paradise that was already set up as a, para as a uh, favorite. You can get to that through another area, so I don't really see the point in that. On the main screen, it shows all the details on your motherboard and firmware, Intel ME BIOS version. You can also set um, security passwords in that section. Um, where most of the real action happens is on the extreme tweaker. You see in the upper area, it shows the actual speeds that the CPU and ring and memory are running. Um, you also have extreme tweaker overclock presets that are provided by ASUS that you can use. Um, I used that the first time for 5 gigahertz, but we can do better on our own. So um, I select uh, XMP in 3200. I set my base clock for 100.05. As you can see here, you can just type that in. The 0 0.05 puts it just over, oops, typed the wrong thing. That needs to be 0 0.5, not 0.5. Anyhow, um, that lets it show real clocks instead of uh, slightly less than what your multiplier is set at. I have it set to sync all cores with 52. And I've set manually the DRAM for 3400. The same settings that I'm showing you today work for 3500 as well. You can see it's 3417 because I have the 0.5 instead of point. Now down here, it gives us more information as we go along. TPU is for, for water cooling. So you don't want to set TPU to if you're running on air. Now I leave SVID support set to auto. I use mode two for the maximus tweak on the memory. That seems to help with stability. You can override your TREFI if you'd like. Sometimes uh, changing the, this. Where is it? It's a DRDR value. Sometimes setting those to zero helps with stability, but we're going to leave it on auto. Set your DLL to uh, four. I may be going a little bit fast for some of you. You can always pause the video and take screenshots if you'd like. On the uh, load line calibration, I use level six. I set my current capability to 130 and then the VRM switching frequency manually to the max. The duty control and phase controls to extreme. Current capability for the DRAM, I set to 130% and the switching frequency to 500 as well. And I max out the long and short duration power limit and set the time window to 1. On the Tweaker's Paradise menu, I manually set 1 GHz for the power on frequency. And most everything else I leave set to auto here. I max out the core current limit. I set my multiplier minimum maximum to 47 and then I manually set my RAM 1.470 for 5 gigahertz and I've overridden my DRAM voltage and other things that you saw on that screen there. Everything is set to auto on those settings. 
on the CPU configuration, you're going to want to go in and uh, turn off it. Software Guard Extensions SGX. Disable that piece of crap. I also disable the Execute Bit feature. Everything else here is uh, defaulted. You want to disable Speed Shift technology. That is not going to want to work with you. And I also disable C states. That's my personal preference. This is shows you what's being monitored and you can change it to monitor or ignore on the screen. If it, set, if it has NA, that means there's nothing connected to the motherboard. In the Q fan, you can set like your minimum fan speed if you want to like 600 RPM, or you can set it lower if you prefer. I can't hear my fans at 600, so I don't see any reason to run them slower than that. Whenever you reset your BIOS, you'll have to go back in and make these changes again unless you save them to a profile. And I'll show you how to do that later. I have my um, all-in-one pump control set to disabled, which basically causes the pump to run full blast all the time. You can set it to DC or P and manually set things, or you can use PWM. Um, I, just, I just prefer to disable it and have it maxed out running full blast. No reason for the pump to run slower. I don't care. On the boot menu, um, I, I like my boot logo disabled so I can see text. You can change the time for the post report if you want. I'm running uh, dual booting with Windows 7, so legacy support CSM is important. I go in and I delete all of my secure boot keys because I don't want that filth running. It's garbage. And that's basically all there is on that screen. So the tool screen, you can flash your BIOS on this screen using a file that you've downloaded or downloading one from the internet. It's a nice handy tool. I've already done that a few times. You can browse to wherever you have the BIOS file saved on your computer if you want. The setup animator is kind of a hokey deal. I like it disabled with it enabled. It gives you that, you know, animated screen change, which uh, to me that kind of sucks. Who cares? So I disable that. So here on, we have our overclocking profiles. You can see that I have several profiles saved here. So you can type in a name and tell it which space to save it to like space 3 there's 5.2 SVID. You can also, um, let me grab a USB drive. I'll show you how to save these profiles to a USB thumb drive as well. Let me pop one in. Take a second for the computer to read it. It's a nice feature because if you flash the BIOS, it erases your profiles if you have them saved on a floppy. There we go. You can see I have those three profiles saved there. Control and F2 saves the setting to a text file that you can share or read. And then F2 saves it to one of those CMO files, which is the actual overclocking profile that you can import. So that's pretty much how that works. And when you go to save changes and exit, it tells us what we've changed. So you can see that I, I didn't set my base clock back to what I normally have it to. Let's go back and put it to 100.05 instead of 100.5. And when you go to save and exit, that's no longer one of the things that's being changed. So just click OK. Click cancel just a second here. So if I have that profile saved there, if I type in the name of it that I want, I'm saving the minimum fan speed of uh, 600 RPM. That's why I'm saving this now, so you'll see how it works. Let 
you're limited in character space, so you'll have to be creative. Save it to Profile 4. And you can see now on the list of profiles it was saved there, so that's pretty slick. And when we go to Save and Exit, it'll show us that we're saving that to Profile 4 as well. So that's basically it in the nutshell. It's not hard. Bear in mind that each system is different. You have a different motherboard and a different CPU. You're going to probably have to use different voltage, either up or down from what you saw in this video. Feel free to go back and slow down the video and take screenshots, whatever you'd like, and use those as a starting point. Please bear in mind that if you do not have cooling, you will have a terrible overclocking experience. This system has a 360 millimeter radiator with Vardar Furious fans. The GPU is also liquid cooled and there are several other fans in the chassis. So if you don't have good cooling, you can expect thermal throttling, instability, and an abbreviated lifespan. Cooling should be the most important thing that you focus on. So don't jump into this endeavor unless you're certain that your components are up to the cooling task. As you can see, this system's turning some really incredible scores in 3D Mark 11 and Firestrike, both the CPU and the GPU. It's totally rock solid, very stable system, and I'm really pleased with it. If you're going to go 8700K, I definitely recommend the ASUS ROG Maximus 10 Hero Wi-Fi AC motherboard. So if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click the thumbs up. And if not, I hope you have a happy Christmas anyway. Wow, 2018 is right around the corner. You guys take care and thanks for watching the video. I'm <laughs> sorry.